City and it ended up in Lake Okeechobee before the turn of the century and in the little town of Davie in 1910. And, and I was raised by a grandfather that, that was a game warden, one of the first game wardens in the Everglades. And I can remember the smell, God's landscaping, the sunsets, and the wildlife. We're here in South Miami celebrating the 31st annual Everglades Coalition Conference, talking about what's important for restoring America's Everglades. Well, the most important thing for Everglades restoration is to have water levels that are compatible with the environment, the ecology, all of our wildlife, all of our endangered species, and all of our plant communities. A wetland is very sensitive to water levels. So through science, we have to establish the operational water level and understand we could have 100-year acts of God with 60-day duration time frames that it could exceed that level, but it has to recede in a certain time frame. Otherwise, it's a man-made event. So the most, one of the most important things <clears throat> in a wetland is you have compatible water levels and, and the FWC has put together three quarters of a century of, of science base going back to 1943 to, to establish what that compatible water level is. Well, Everglades National Park is not only one of our national treasures here in our country, but it's also a World Heritage Site. A lot of people don't realize that uh, the ecology of Everglades is unique in the world uh, and it happens to also be one of these places that has been altered and now we're working together with many partners uh, including those in the coalition to restore the Everglades uh, so that we can enjoy uh, not only the natural resource that is right here in our backyard but I keep telling people that our livelihood here in South Florida depends on it. Most people don't realize that one out of, of every four Floridians drinks water from the Everglades. It's a very important place for us. I personally grew up in the Everglades. My family had a dairy farm that was uh, in the glades, and so that was my first experiences in life and I've had a, a, a strong affection of, for the Everglades and a commitment to their restoration. Uh, what can citizens do? Uh, one, they can get involved in organizations, whether it's the uh, Everglades uh, Foundation, the Audubon, Sierra, other groups that are committed to the restoration of the Everglades. Uh, they can get involved by contacting their legislators. There were some things that happened at the last session which were very detrimental to the process of restoring the Everglades, which we can't afford to repeat in 2016. There's no way to understand, appreciate, and be motivated to try to be part of the protection of the Everglades better than to uh, actually experience them, to, to walk through the wetlands, to appreciate uh, the wildlife, the bird life that uh, is there. So that would be my first step is know the Everglades and they will uh, romance you uh, into their support. The Everglades are the largest wetland in America and it, it provides habitat to over 68 threatened and endangered species. It provides water supply to one in three Floridians. The Everglades Restoration um, Program or project that was authorized in 2000 by Congress and um, the state of Florida is the local sponsor is critical for the entire um, uh, ecosystem and the economy as well. We um, back in the 40s we rechannelized the entire system from Lake Okeechobee all the way to the Florida Keys in order to live here in order to dry out some of the um, Everglades that um, that we rely on now for our water supply. So Miami-Dade County 
these projects that I mentioned, Biscayne Bay and uh, Florida Bay, these projects are critical uh, for not just the ecosystem, but also in the national parks, but also for our drinking water supply. As we continue to grow uh, and we continue to, uh, to rely on this water system, we really need to, to restore and keep it uh, thriving. The Everglades is a unique aquatic ecosystem, and so with that, it has, it has habitat somewhat degraded, but habitat for species that are found nowhere else in the world. So as we look at uh, those different species, the wood stork, the Cape Sable, Seaside Sparrow, etc., you don't find in the quantities uh, that they are, you don't find them anywhere else in the world. That's why it's so important. And then it also has ecological benefits in improving water quality, as any wetlands environment does, improving water quality for the downstream receiving bodies. And that's important for uh, the estuaries and Florida Bay, importantly, to the south of the system. I own South Florida is very important to, to be able to people visually see what we're talking about. And people have to understand that eight to nine million people rely on the Everglades for their drinking water. So it, it's the quality of our lives too, and, and obviously protecting the wildlife and the environment, we're actually protecting ourselves. And I think it's very important uh, that people understand that. And through, we're starting to do some uh, wildlife filming and, and some different filming about Everglades restoration so that people can be aware of what's going on and what is right and what is wrong. All of us need to come together and form a consensus of shared adversity, shared impacts throughout the global Everglades with equalization of water levels. We're very blessed to have all this water. And a lot of people don't understand, and people ask me, how do we save all the wildlife? And my answer is, save the environment, protect the environment, the wildlife will take care of themselves. But truthfully, we need to save ourselves too. Because eight to nine million people rely on the Everglades for their drinking water.